It's time now to check your money with America's Money Maven, Vicki Brackens. Vicki Brackens is president of Brackens Financial Solutions Network, LLC, and a registered representative of LPL Financial, member SIPC. Good morning, Vicki, and happy November to you. Oh, happy November to you too, George. You know what? A um, couple of days ago, I was working with my staff and I reminded them that we have, um, at that point in time, 35 working days left in the year. Can wow. you believe that? 35. Now, now we look at the fact that we, we, we don't consider the holiday period to be working time. Mm -hmm. And we also have a, a week or so that we, uh, at the end of the year, the right. business transactions really just don't take place. Because after about the 22nd, you can forget it. Folks are in the party and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But basically, productive time, 35 days. So happy November, I guess. Did you fall you back? Business. I have a, I fell. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you got an extra hour of sleep. You should be happy about that. I, I still fell, George. Okay, I don't. I, I don't know what to, what to tell you. Okay. I, I I tell you, it's much easier in the fall because you would want that extra hour. That's in true. The, in the spring, it's a little bit like what you know what I mean. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, before I forget, I'm going to give a, a quick little bit of an apology to our audience today because I'm gonna try and move some screens around. So we'll see how this goes, but it's a very important, I think, well, in fact, you posed a question to me um, earlier All right, that I wanted me, to be sure I addressed. So go ahead and, and ask that question again. So this week we saw some record highs in the, in the market, uh, uh, as high as 36,000, who knows where it is on the day we're talking. But um, the thing is, I, I asked you, is there any significance to the fact that we keep seeing record highs? Because the administration would want you to believe it's because of their robust economic stimulus and packages and so forth and so on. And so I ask you, is what should we as the ordinary consumer take from these record highs in the Dow? I'm speaking in the Dow Jones Industrial. Okay, well, uh, the first thing I wanna say is that what I'm about to say is not specific investment advice for anyone, but it's just some things that should make you go, aha, uh -huh, or make you think a little bit. And I'm going to put a screen up right quick that I want everybody to see. Can uh, you see that, George? That's a valley or something? <laughs> oh, a valley. No, I don't want you to see a valley. <laughs> see, I told you, I wasn't quite sure Okay, how this was going to work out. Although the valley, the valley may be the great way of saying it. The screen that I'm trying to get up, okay, and I'm not going to, looks like I'm not going to be successful in doing this, okay, is this one. Yes, 1738, okay. yes. All right. The Dow Jones Industrial Average closing value on October 19th, 1987. Why would I choose that date? That is the day that I began my career. October 19th, 1987. Mm -hmm. 1738. What did you just ask me as far as what was the record? Uh, well, we hit as high as 36,000 this past week. 36,000. So you said, what's the significance? Let me tell you the, signif the significance. Are you in the game? Are you in the game? Are you participating? Have you sit look at what the impact would have been if you started to participate at the time that I began my career, which was October 19th. 1987. The tremendous growth in wealth over that period of time, if you had just been involved in a basic um, industry mutual fund that covered the gamut of the majority of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is about 30 individual stocks, and continued on a systematic basis to uh, invest, say through um, automatic investment, pay from your paycheck, and continue to do this for this entire time period, the value would have grown from 1738 to 36,000 at this point in time. So now you're saying, well, maybe it's too late. The person that was in my, um, let's say client base or prospect base at the time back in 87 said it was too late because at some point in time it was 600. Right. Okay, it was 600 say in the 60s or, so, or 70s. And now it was seven and it was too late. And then when we got to the dot com bubble, it was too late. And then when we got to the economic crisis, it was too late. 
every segment has been a continually uptick and to continue to say it's too late and not participate is the impact is what you are losing. So if you want to ask me again, what's the impact? I would say if you're not in the game, you are losing. There you go. And I, I shouldn't I shouldn't use the word game. If you are not participating in the economic growth of the world, of the economic growth of the U.S. economy, you are continually, continuing to set yourself up to lose. But you must understand the basics of investing. You must understand um, the principles of investing, and you must follow those and not follow the hype. There you go. All right. Okay. Don't believe the hype, but... Uh, the metaphor is participate in the economic growth if you want to see, uh, if you want to build wealth, I guess. Is That's what, correct. Participate that's in I'm economic saying. growth if you, yeah. want to, if you want to build wealth. There okay, now, George, I, I did it. I actually got the right screen up. Okay, it only took one extra time. That's okay. Sure. But, All right. but, but now, if you want to use the metaphor, the valley you first showed us. True. Would have been, that's what it's 1730. <laughs> That, that was what you, was, you, you, wanted, you wanted to paint the picture before you put you. the number up. There you go. There you go. I painted the picture before These, I put, for the, put the number up. For the radio up. audience, they're like, what the heck are they talking about? Well, just go to our YouTube channel uh, and we can find out what we're talking about. Bracken's FSN, uh, Bracken's FSN, uh, Bracken's Financial Solutions Network on YouTube. But we'll get to that later. Okay. All right. Then. So now you gave me, though, a perfect segment or segue into what I wanted to uh, spend some time talking about today, and that is there was an article, and I'm going to read a little bit of this for you. And thank you for sending this over, George. Women may be better investors than men. Did you love and that? I love <laughs> this. Okay? This, is, this came out in New York Times this week. Okay, Women may be better investors than men. And then the author, who was a Ron Lieber, which was on October 29th, he said, let me mansplain why. Mm. Wow. Okay. Um, so I looked at this and, and he starts off and I'm going to read the first paragraph to you. It says, Merrill was a guy and so was Lynch. Mm. Goldman, a dude, and Sachs as well. Charles Schwab is a man and so was E.F. Hutton. Hutton, excuse me. Gordon Gecko was an alpha male and Jordan Belfort, for those of you who don't know this, the Wolf of Wall Street, totally bro. So what does this tell us, okay, as far as why he would have, as far as his title, women may be better investors, yet all the names on all the icons around the financial services industry, around investing, are all male. Here's what they found out in, 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 in doing a study. Fidelity did a study over about a nine-year period. They looked at close to, I think it was like 5 million investor accounts. Those accounts were basically brokerage accounts, not necessarily retirement accounts, but they looked at the investing pattern of men versus women and a very important uh, aha emerged. And here's what it was. Men trade at a much more frequent rate than women do. And that trading activity leads to a decrease in returns. The decrease was about 0.4% of, or four tenths of a percent. Um, and you would think, well, four tenths of a percent is not a lot, but when you start compounding it from 1987 all the way up to today, you will start to see a significant difference because long-term strategies are the, are the way that you win. You will see a significant difference in return. Yet, when you look at the names and the uh, psychology and the way that our society has skewed men to be the leaders in financial uh, investing, you would wonder why would we fight a war and have half the population believing that they do not have the ability to actually um, to invest in the marketplace. So basically what I'm saying is that women believe that they can't do it. Mm. And I, I think I, I dropped a, um, a, 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 a post um, on LinkedIn a couple of days ago. And I said, why don't we women step into our power? Here's what okay, is, is, is starting to emerge as far as some of the reasons. Reasons being the way we're socialized, number one. And number two, and this, is, this one really surprised me, 
on a biological basis, um, they are starting to believe that because of testosterone, I went, wow, okay, this is really deep. Because of testosterone, it creates overconfidence in the way men look at their abilities to tackle the market and it increases competition. It's not about competition as far as how you, competition with other men. I did this and I made, and I hear it all the time around the, you know, the, what they call the water cooler conversation. Yeah. Okay. This kind of competitive structure, a competitive nature actually leads to bad choices when it comes to investing. You've heard it over and over again, asset allocation, long-term strategies, and stay in the game. But when you're trading, you're going in and out of the game, primarily on emotion, on a behavioral pattern. Whereas women tend to, because we are less confident about our abilities to be in the market, we tend to look for longer strategies, are more hesitant to trade, and that hesitancy has kept us in our portfolios longer and created better returns. Now, I'm kind of like torn with this, George, and I'll tell you why I'm torn. Yeah. We should not be underconfident as far as women. Mm -hmm. We have the same abilities, but we don't have the same exposure. We have the same abilities, but we don't have the same level of experience because the marketplace and the way we, we've been socialized tends to push this responsibility toward males. So what would I tell women to do? Get more experience and get involved and stay involved. On the other hand, on yeah. male, on males are, are, are concerned, look at your patterns of trading so that you understand that frequency does not necessarily mean efficiency. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot that we could, we could cover on this, on this subject, George, but I know, okay, at this point in time, I probably should say our plate is full, but I would encourage everyone reach out to us on YouTube. As you said earlier, we have our YouTube channel for Bracken's Financial Solutions Network. You can go and see this segment and many more concerning the subject here. Um, be sure and like and share. You can reach us at area code 315-930-4499 or of course at info at brackensfsn.com. And um, yeah, as far as uh, reaching out to us if you have any additional questions. So at this point, George, as I said, our plate is full. All right. And I hope that people set their clocks back an hour. And oh, George. Back. Yes. Okay. <laughs> if they All did. Right. Okay. All right. They can pick us up on online. Okay. Vicki Brackens is the president of Brackens Financial Solutions Network, LLC, and a registered representative of LPL Financial Member SIPC. She is America's money maven.